Photo editing software like Affinity Photo can be very overwhelming. With so many buttons, sliders, menus, and keyboard shortcuts, it's easy to get lost. I know, I've been there. However, for some tasks that seem very complicated, at first, there are super easy workarounds. So let me share with you 15 Affinity Photo features that will make you fall in love with editing again. Also, you'll notice that I'll be using many keyboard shortcuts. So feel very free to download my workflow booster cheat sheet for absolutely free, which includes the most used Affinity Photo keyboard shortcuts. All right, let's start off easy with trick number one. All right, so now the first trick has to do with straightening the image. So what you usually do is press V to grab the move tool, select your layer and try to rotate it and see what feels right and then release and then you still have to crop in the image. You can also straighten the image by using the crop tool. So we can press C on the keyboard, which is the keyboard shortcut for the crop tool. And then you can go to the context toolbar to hit straighten or you can hold and press uh, the command key and then you get this little ruler as you can see and all you want to do is click and drag over the horizon and boom your uh, image is cropped and straightened at the same time so now when you press enter you can see that we've got a nice straight image now the second trick also has to do with the crop tool so if i press c again you can see here in the context toolbar that i can change the overlay usually i keep it at the rule of thirds but if you want to change it you can change it to golden spiral you can change it to diagonals and to a phi grid now another way to change the, the overlays is when the crop tool is active you can press o on the keyboard and you can see that you can toggle between all of the different overlays and one more thing if you want to use the golden spiral, uh, you can hold shift and then press O to change the position of the center of the golden spiral. Now trick number three is going to be a very useful one and that is going to be to batch rename layers. So as you can see in this project, I didn't really name any of the layers and it can get quite messy if you want to return to a specific project. Now you can see that if I toggle this one on and on here in the top of the screen, you can see my little signature. So I know this is a signature and the second one is the penguin. The third one is going to be the shadow of the penguin, as you can see. The fourth one is going to be the second penguin and the uh, two below are going to be two more shadows. And then we made quite some corrections. Now how to do this, you want to double click to rename either one layer. So let's call this one signature and then press tap and you can see that it just jumps to the second layer. So now I can do penguin one, tap, shadow, penguin one, tap penguin 2 etc etc so use the tab key to quickly batch rename layers all right so tip number four has to do with these bounding boxes and all things that you see in your image so when you're working on an image like this one and you select something you can always see these bounding boxes it can be useful um, but it can also be pretty annoying if you don't want these bounding boxes and you just want to see the full image you just press h on the keyboard which is the hand tool and this removes all these distractions and one more quick tip if you really want to remove all distractions then just use the tab key to remove the interface of affinity photo all right so trick number five has to do with the background of your document so by default if you create a new document it looks like this and it has a white background now let's say i got my uh, logo right over here and let's say i want to save this but with a transparent background but i want to keep the spaces on the outside let's say now if i usually would do this then i would press uh, command shift alt s which is the keyboard shortcut for e export i would go to png but once i save it as a png and a whole document right now you can see that it actually saves the background with it so let's actually change that if i go to document at the top right here and i click transparent background you can see that now i've got a transparent background and now you can see that i've got the png but it saved the spacing around the document so that is how to save documents with extra spacing with a transparent background all right so trick number six is also quite a useful one and especially when you're working with brushes so let's say i got my uh, brush tool selected and let's grab some weird colors so let's grab green and i am actually painting right now now i've got my brush uh, brush tool selected but let's say i want to quickly temporarily use my eraser brush tool you can hold and press e so which is the keyboard shortcut for the eraser tool and then you temporarily use the eraser tool and once i release once again it pops back to my um, brush tool so this is kind of a useful way instead of like having to go over and select the, the other tool you can brush and then hold the eraser tool quickly and then keep on brushing and then hold the eraser tool again etc etc so you can temporarily pick any 
tool if you tap and hold and then release once again. The trick also has to do with the brush tools. You might know that you can change the brush size by using the bracket keys, which is a very useful keyboard shortcut. So now you can see I've got a soft brush uh, and now I got a bigger soft brush. But you can also change the hardness of your brush by using the bracket keys while holding shift. So if you hold shift and you use the bracket key, you can actually see that I got a very um, hard brush. And if I yeah shift and do the left bracket key, I can turn it back to a very soft brush. My trick number eight also has to do with brushes and the brush panel in this case. Now let's say you love using brushes like I do and I press B on the keyboard to select my brush tool and let me go to the I am Renzi nature brushes and this is a picture that I actually sh shot yesterday on a hike with my dog and let's say I want to add some birds in the sky so I'm gonna go to my birds and create a new pixel layer and then I'm gonna click right here and now I've got very nice birds in the sky but that's not what this tip is about. This tip is about how to um, copy or how to move brushes from one brush set to another. So as you can see, I've got quite many brush sets, but I've also created a favorite one, which is right at the top right here. Now, if you would usually right click on any brush and you would go move to brush category and you go to favorite, it actually goes out of my current brush set and it goes into my favorite category. However, if you hold Alt or Option, you can see that this word transforms into copy. So if I would hold Alt and then I'm gonna go to favorite brushes, you can see that it's still here. And also if I go to my favorite brush set, now we've got my Birch brush one right there as well. So that's a quick tip to organize your brushes. Also tip number nine has also to do with the brush panel and that is that you can change the layout of your uh, brush panel. So currently you can see that it's a list and you can actually see the drag line, how it looks when you drag um, yeah, your brush. So you can see the stamp at the far left and let's say for my cloud painter brush one, you can see that what happens if I drag from left to right, it actually does what it says right here. And if I grab cloud nine, you can see that it actually stamps clouds next to each other. And that is what you can see right there. However, if you just want to see the brush nozzle, so the brush stamp, what you would do is click the hamburger menu on the top right of your brush panel and you would toggle off uh, show as list. And now you can see just see the brush stamps, which is very useful if you have similar brushes than mine. Now, if you're like me and you like playing around with photos, as you can see in this image right here, then I've made an amazing brush set for you, which is called the Ultimate Brush Bundle. And all the brush sets that you will see right there are included in this bundle. Add northern lights, waterfalls, lens flares, fire, water, stars, planets, comets, milky ways, birds, and so much more to your photos in just a few clicks. Now, you might think that's all fun to have fire brushes, firework brushes, cloud brushes, etc. But I have no idea how to use use these well for you i've created so many tutorials that come with this brush bundle so you'll see how to install them there you get some free resources and then all the tutorials start all of these tutorials are exclusive for the ultimate brush bundle owners and this is just to help you get the most out of this brush bundle so let's say in our first picture you want to add a, uh, a cloud in the sky because the sky is rather boring you just pick any one of the clouds so let's say this one press b on the keyboard to select my brush tool and press x to toggle white increase the brush size maybe a little bit and position it right here and now i've got a realistic cloud um let's say you want to add some lightning let me actually go to my electric brushes and you can just add some electricity uh, straight away yeah just for fun so if you want to spice up your photos then i highly recommend you to check out the ultimate brush bundle you will find the link down below in the description all right let's go to tip number 10 but then also has to do with assets and that is actually the asset panel which is located in my screen right over here um let's say you cannot really see what the asset is about in a newer version of affinity photo you can now actually change the background of the asset so if i click on the hamburger menu um right here i mean uh, you can actually change the background to either light or dark or a checkerboard so sometimes it is more useful to get a checkerboard background uh, that makes it easier to see what your assets actually are.
Tip number 11 has to do with the layers panel and that is how to duplicate layers to a specific point in your layers panel let's say so what you would usually do if you want to duplicate the layer is press command j to duplicate it and then drag it to anywhere where you want so let's say i want this to be at the top there we go done that however there's a quicker way to do this and that is by holding alt or option and just click dragging your layer to a specific point and it will copy and duplicate it automatically to that specific layer in your layers panel all right, so tip number 12 has to do with layer effects. Now, let's say I want to create this little postcard to send back to my family. So you can see that I've got hello and you can see that there is an outline and there's some shadow behind the letters. And let's say I want to copy that to, to my second sentence from France. Now, one way to do this, which is kind of a hassle, is to... Um, uh, select your hello layer and press command c to copy and then go to edit and let, uh, paste fx or this keyboard shortcut control command v however there's a way quicker way to copy layer fx to another layer and that is simply by click dragging onto the new layer and you can see that now my from france layer has got the same layer effects as my hello layer tip number 13 also has to do with layer effects and let's say i want to add another outline to my word let's say you can actually play with multiple outlines so you can see that next to outline there's this plus and there's this cross and you can see that it's for like a certain amount of effects you can see these options so if i want to add an extra outline i simply duplicate the effect by pressing the plus icon and now the bottom one it works same as layers so the bottom one is below my other layer so if i increase this one and i would make it white you can see what I mean. Now you can see that we have actually have got uh, the, the black outline on top and underneath we have got um, a white outline. And let's say we want to copy another one and we want this to be red for whatever reason, just because it's fun. Let's actually create a red outline. And once I increase the radius, you can see that we've got another outline. So now we've got three outlines on the same word. So that is quite a useful thing. If you want to delete specific outlines, let's say we want to delete the white one, you just hit this little X icon and it will delete that outline from our word. And you can also do this with color overlay, with gradient overlay, with outer shadow and with inner shadow. All right, tip number 14 is how to work in isolated layers. So as you can see, this project has got quite many layers and let's say I want to focus on one specific uh, area of this image. Let's say we want to work on this lava bit. So what I can do is double click on it and it would zoom into it. But if I hold Alt and click on the layers thumbnail, you can actually zoom in or you can actually isolate the layers from all the other layers. And you can see that I made quite a mess right here um, with my mask. So if I uh, press my mask and then grab my brush tool, I can actually fix the mask if I wanted to. So like, uh, I can remove this. I can uh, fix it a little bit. And if I want to uh, go back to normal view, you simply click another, any other layer and you will go back to your normal view. So that is how to work in isolated layers. So tip number 15 is going to be a super useful one, especially when uh, compositing. And let's say with this image, I want to swap out the sky. So as you can see right here, um, let me show you. I actually made a mask of the windmills and of the foreground and so I clipped this mask to my new sky. Now let's say I want to move the sky around a little bit because I don't like where it is positioned. But however you can see when I move my sky right now you can see that I actually drag the, the mask layer with it so I'm moving my mask. This is something I don't want. Now what you can do if you've got Affinity Photo 2.4 you can actually click on lock children, which sounds quite funny to me, honestly, but you can lock the children, which basically means that you lock the layers that are clipped to your image layer. In this case, um, our sky layer. And now you can see I can click and drag it around. Now, there's another way to uh, lock the children. Um, we can also, if I drag right now, you can see that, that I drag my mask with it. However, if I hold spacebar, you can see that this is the keyboard shortcut to locking the children. So if I hold spacebar, I can move the sky to wherever I want. 
and just release and there we go so that is how to lock your masks now i hope you found at least one of these tips useful don't forget to grab a free copy of the workflow booster cheat sheet and of course check out the ultimate brush bundle if you want to have tons of fun in affinity photo editing your photos links down below and i'll see you in the next one ciao